This motor, by saying it's rated at a continuous horsepower of 15, which is kind of an absurd notion, it means it'll use 746 watts times 15 continuously for one hour, and they will warrant that it does not burn up the insulation in doing that. All right. Okay. Now, if you yeah, want to run it meters. two hours at 15 horsepower or 15 times 746, um, about 12K, hmm. um, it, it might not do that. It might just get too hot. It's a one hour one rating. One hour rating. If you want it to do 52 horsepower peak, that's about three times, almost four times, the continuous rating. And we commonly use that four or five to X times the uh, basic rating is what it'll do. Um, understand this is all rated, this particular motor, at 96 volts. Right. If we we're go to a running, higher voltage, we go to a lower current for the same amount of power. Wow. And all of that is thrown out the window if you do this at 105 volts. If I make you a chart at 108 volts and you want to run at 115, it all goes out the window again. Mm -hmm. Are they related? Well, yeah, you could develop some ratios. But they're kind of a guess even then. It, it right. is a science except show me because they have to run it. the geometry of the motor and so forth takes, takes different things. So what you're really talking about is the motor's ability uh, to do axial work and dissipate heat at the same time. And heat is the big function. Now, uh, for 10 seconds, if I can do... 12 kilowatts for an hour. For mm -hmm. 10 seconds, I can do quite a bit more than quite this. A bit. Even for 20 seconds, I can do quite a bit more. They're saying a peak of 52. It's a made up number. There's people take these motors and put 2,000 amps in them at 150 volts. That's 150 mm -hmm. kilowatts. How long can you do that before the motor blows up? Some of them make it a quarter of a mile. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you don't. Push it on the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they're pushing it onto the trailer. But they can put 150 kilowatts out, and until the smoke gets out, it'll go like <laughs> bat out of hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the reason that these ratings are a little squishy is because it's a little squishy. There's not a number of cylinders or a, uh, you know, you can rate them, but it's... Uh, so this one's rated at 15 horsepower for an hour. And, and that's the rating I like, but because of the claims uh, and the inflation thereof, all the electric car manufacturers are normally claiming the peak in kilowatts. Yes. It's a 150 kilowatt motor, it's a 200 kilowatt motor for four and a half seconds. <laughs> It'll do it. <laughs> and we go zero to 60 and four, so it must be okay. We left a little pad there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, the take on um, uh, motor uh, stuff. So uh, this motor is a little smaller and a little shorter, which nice. is a big advantage. Yeah. Brian, I'll tell you, our <laughs> difficulty getting the Hort 9 with the auxiliary um, shaft in it, it was in the original Speedster. Uh, was uh, we'd actually given up, and I walked up and leaned against the cherry picker, yeah. and it slid forward an inch, and everything dropped into place after he and uh, uh, oh, Kurt had been working on it for an hour and a half. Yeah, we wrestled with it a while till we were exhausted and leaned on the cherry picker. I, I walked up and leaned on the cherry picker, and it slipped, <laughs> and the whole motor popped into place. Uh, so the the uh, this is uh, so we don't have a tail shaft. That's no. where we put our magnetic takeoff for the right. uh, speedometer. For, for the uh, for speed, speedster part, duh. Um, we have an output from the controller, but I don't know if it'll work with that old video gauge. And right. so we yeah. need to make provisions for uh, that two pulse magnetic um, pickup, cheap, cheapy, uh, right. that we know that works. we know it'll work, exactly. And we can't put it on the back end because we have no. Shaft. I have no, no. Now I find out that we could have had a shaft. In fact, if we'd have ordered a week later, I guess we'd have gotten a shaft. Oh, one thing I did want to add with that uh, ordering this in the shaft is that now 
that auxiliary shaft comes as the standard motor. Mm -hmm. So that if you don't want the auxiliary shaft, that's you have, what you have, you to, have specify. to specify without the auxiliary shaft. No problem. I'll just tell them we want an AC50-02-1. It'll be clear as day. <laughs> clear as mud. <laughs> okay. So here we are. What we uh, found out, and I went through all that power thing, not to be a pompous ass, but to make the point, which I do very well, by the way, but to make the point <laughs> that if we can get rid of some heat, that's cool. Right. So to Less. speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, in managing power in high current electrical devices, the more heat you get rid of. And we're going to do some things on this Speedster part uh, that are, number one, we're going to put a chill plate under the uh, controller and a water system. But the motor doesn't lend itself to that very good. I put, could put some coils around it. might still do that. But this is too obvious. We've got a flat plate with mounting holes already. Yeah, that we don't need. This is a, a Comair Rotron little motor I got on eBay for 25 bucks. It puts out like 135 cubic feet a minute. We use the same fan in the mini battery box. In the box. battery box, yeah. I got like 10 of them for 100 bucks or something. It was, they were quite cheap on eBay. This is a model JQ12B4, Comair Rotron. A little bigger than a computer fan, but 12 volts, 135 cubic feet per minute. And it uses little longish um, eight, number eight screw 32 right. thread, um, two or three inches to mount from it. It's got four mounting holes. So all we need is some way to put that on the end of that motor and, uh, and not be a budding to um, the encoder. the encoder and we can blow cold air up that motor now it'll be a gentle flow it's not a huge amount but 135 cubic feet a minute in a nine inch tube it'll get rid of some heat it'll, it'll surprise you so what we needed was an adapter and so we just had one made cape uh, specialty machinery cape precision machine cape Cape Precision Machines here in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, Lucian, yeah. um, has been doing some work for us quite well and at a reasonable price. And uh, so we just I just gave him a drawing, a ring, three-quarter inch aluminum stock uh, with a ring cut out of it, and uh, one inch countersinks, half inch holes, four of them. And we knocked out a little notch um, here to uh, accommodate the wiring. And so that, we got, we got this done in two days. It costs a hundred bucks. And uh, it, we're not even gonna use the four holes. If I do it again, we'll do two. Yeah. We're holding a 1.8 fan, pound fan. And we're doing it with half inch bolts. Half inch bolts. <laughs> with lock nuts. You do need a thin wall socket uh, going this way. Uh, because of the size of our thing, but we just stick that on and uh, tighten it down where the the bolts are a little bit below the the flange, and it, you don't need to torque this or anything. You're holding a a two pound fan on the end. This is going to be overkill because of what we're hooking up to is just that size. And then I take our fan. I've got there. You've got them in your hand. Some uh, 8 32nd, uh, number 8, 32 no. No thread. The fan is marked with an arrow for airflow. And we're going to take the uh, mark side and put it in. I believe with our uh, direction forward, uh, the, air, the, fan, the motor will pull the air forward naturally. So we're going to set this the same way. If I'm wrong, we turn the fan turn around. around. Right. Um, so we stick a, uh, about a two and a quarter, is it? That's Top, bottom. Yeah, tops here. Tops here. About a two and a quarter inch. I think I got a three inch and cut it off with a hacksaw. Um, number eight screw. And there we go. And, uh, Let's stick in a couple others. 
Uh, all we did was way. literally took a. Uh, like that. Is that where we lined up? It's pretty close there. Uh, I mean, you get these hardware store drill and tap for eight thirty seconds. Just drilled a hole in the soft aluminum and uh, tapped it. And we're gonna screw right into it. And uh, I've got two terminals here, one for plus and one for minus. This one will tie to ground, this one we would tie to 12 volts. Yep. Uh, 